Okay, so my next problem is I have a jar that I want to sit right here in the middle of the air. Um, and I want it to be relatively straight up. Um, so how do I do that? Well, I obviously need to make some kind of platform for it to sit on. Or, or I could hang it from something. Or, But the way I seem to be gravitating towards after trying lots of things is to make a table that it can sit on. And the problem to make a table is I need to have something that sits in here and follows the curvature of this and will stay in place. So what I started out with doing is, uh, if you've ever heard of a French curve, it's a drafting tool. Um, and what it allows you to do, it's a flexible piece of material that allows you to create any kind of curve. Well, here's a clothes hanger that I stretched out earlier. And what I did was I made the clothes hanger um, follow the curve of the bowl. Now, having done that, I was able to, using some thick cardboard, excuse me, using some thick cardboard, um, draw out a piece of cardboard that follows that shape. Um, okay, so now I've got a piece of cardboard that follows the correct shape to sit in here. Now, if I have two of these, they could act as kind of the legs for a uh, table. So I made two of these, and this is what I came up with. Um, here's one of them, here's the other one, and then I uh, made the platform, uh, estimating this correct size, and now it just sits in just like that, and the bowl can sit right there provided I keep my hand here. <laughs> and um, what I need to do actually is extend this down into here and this side too, and that will do it. Otherwise, if you don't, that's what happens. Um, so, having made this prototype really, the next step is to make a metal one out of this, because I don't want to use cardboard, I want to use metal for a couple of reasons. One is that metal will conduct the heat from the reflector from the bowl to the table and then onto the uh, jar. Um, for, so I want it to be metal for that reason. Plus, um, I'm going to make all kinds of holes here just so I can get more light going through. Uh, so, to do that, I'm going to replicate this, but in aluminum, and make these legs stick out longer so that they can go down into here to give it some support in this direction. Okay, this is aluminum flashing. It's some leftover stuff I have. This kind of thing you get in hardware stores. I think it comes in rolls. I think it's used for... Um, um, the roofing, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. So I've taken apart my prototype here so that I can trace it down on the uh, flashing. Now keep in mind right here, I wanted to have it uh, go down into the box a bit, right there. I made a little trace on here as to the angle I want. The deeper the better. Okay, so now the idea is to cut that, fold that. I'll make a second one. I'm going to make two just so I get extra strength out of it. Here's a suggestion. <laughs> Open the flashing, put on gloves. Okay, so there's the flashing all cut out. Just gonna straighten that out. It's pretty flexible stuff. That's why I wanna why I wanna have two, one inside the other. It's very flexible. Who knows, maybe even three. <laughs> They're not, not hard to make, as you can see. So I'm gonna put in the line where I'm gonna bend it. So, bending it is simple enough. Put it on a table edge, line up your line with the edge of the table, and there you go.
Okay, let's try that out. Okay, so it didn't quite all go according to plan. <laughs> That's the jar in there. It works fairly well, but what I had to do, eh, let's see, was I had to bend the legs a little bit. Uh, my whole plan for having the legs go down into the box and having that hold, this aluminum wasn't strong enough and it just didn't work out. Um, so what I did is I bent them like that and then I take the edges here and I kind of put them in the corrugation of the cardboard and that, that wedges it into place and there we go. I'm not sure, it'll, it holds a pretty steep angle if I go shallower and I start to lose it. But So uh, right now noon is about this angle right here. So I'm good. So this afternoon I'll put this, I'll paint this black and I'll uh, try to see if I can make some rice for dinner. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, that ends this series on how I made my cone solar cooker. Naturally it'll evolve as I use it more, so keep an eye on my website for any changes. And if you miss seeing the solar cooker in action, click here for part one.